In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate the toe up version of the spiral toe, also known as the star toe or round toe. This is the reverse of the cuff down toe I demonstrated last week. I'll start with an overview of the construction, then demonstrate the process on the needles. I'll explain how to read your knitting as you knit the toe and how to recover from a common mistake so that you don't have to rip back. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can tap or mouse over the video playback area of your screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. So I want to give you an overview of the construction of this particular sock toe. It starts at the tip of the toe with a closed cast on. So you can use any type of closed cast on. Judy's magic cast on is the one I tend to use, but if you prefer the Turkish cast on or the figure eight cast on, you can use that. You're going to be knitting in the round after you cast on and you're going to increase four times every round until you have about a third of the stitches that you're going to want for the full circumference of your foot. After that, you will continue increasing as you did before with four increases every increase round, but you'll follow an incre your increase rounds with a plain round until you have the full number of stitches that you need. So this is the reverse of the toe that I demonstrated last time, which was also the spiral toe. This one was knit cuff down, so it, you decreased down to the end of the toe. This one will be increased up from the start of the toe. So we're only going to cast on eight stitches altogether. We're going to, I'm, I'm using a single circular needle and I'll be working in magic loop. If you prefer the two circulars method or you prefer some other type of needle for working your socks in the round, you can do that. I think to get started, it's easier to do the cast on in the first few rounds using magic loop and then switching. But if you are comfortable starting out with double points or flexi flips or whatever you like, feel free to do that. So for Judy's magic cast on, I need just a short tail in order to cast on a few stitches. Insert that between the two needles. That counts as my first cast on stitch. And now I will alternate using the lower yarn to put stitches on the upper needle and the upper yarn to put stitches on the lower needle, essentially creating those stitches by doing a yarn over each time. So I have my eight stitches and now I'm going to start working in the round. I'm going to turn my needles so that they are pointed left. I'm going to make sure that my tail and the working yarn cross each other so that they are linked. With Judy's Magic Cast On, I just need to do a setup, half, half of a setup round. I don't need to work a full round before my increases. If you are using the Turkish Cast On or Figure Eight Cast On, I would work a, one full round before starting your increase rounds. Judy's Magic Cast On essentially creates a half a round during the cast on process, so it's not really necessary to work a full round. Okay, I have worked across the first four stitches. Now I'm ready to begin my increase rounds. We're going to do the increases by doing a yarn over and then on the next round, we will work the, the yarn over so that it twists and it creates essentially a make one increase, but the result is a row after a make one increase that would be done by lifting the running thread. We're going to be doing four increases equally spaced and we're going to do them using yarn overs. So if you hold the, yarn, the working yarn in your left hand, you can just bring your needle underneath that yarn. That is your yarn over and then you can knit two stitches. Do your, do another yarn over and do the two stitches. For the second half of the round, I'll demonstrate uh, with the yarn in my right hand so you can see how you would do a yarn over um, at the beginning of a needle that way. So bring the yarn in front, insert your needle through there 
tension the yarn however you need to in order to work your stitches and the act of bringing your hand to the back creates the yarn over on the needle and then you can knit the next stitch. So you've got your yarn over, a knit stitch, another knit stitch, and now you're going to do uh, a yarn over and then you're going to knit two more stitches. For the second increase round, again, we're going to start with a yarn over, but now we need to close the yarn over from the previous round. We're going to work it through the back of the stitch so that it will twist. And then we work the next two stitches. We can see that here's that yarn over from the previous round. We're going to work a yarn over to create an, another new stitch, work this yarn over that's on the needle uh, through the back so that it twists, and then knit the next two stitches. We're going to repeat that for the second half of the round. Start with a yarn over, work that previous yarn over through the back in order to close it, knit two stitches, yarn over, knit the previous yarn over through the back and knit the two stitches. So we should have 16 stitches on the needle. We should have eight stitches on each half. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. So we, and we do. At this point, I like to uh, hang a marker uh, from one side just so that I can keep track of where the beginning of the round is. We're going to do a yarn over work the previous yarn over through the back and then we have three stitches to knit before we get to the second yarn over. We work our yarn over, then we work the next stitch through the back and work the remaining three stitches on the needle. Yarn over, knit this stitch through the back, work until I get to the next yarn over, so three stitches, yarn over, knit the previous yarn over through the back, and then knit to the end of the round. Once you have about a third of the stitches that you need for your entire uh, foot of your sock, then it's time to switch to working an increased round followed by a plain round. So I have 20 stitches on my needle, which is about a third of 64 stitches. If you wanted to knit 72 stitches, you'd need to have 24 stitches on the needle. If you wanted to work an 80 stitch sock, about 28 stitches would be what you'd want um, for this first section. Now I'm going to work my first plain round. So I still have a yarn over on the needle that needs to be closed. So I will be working my yarn over through the back and then knitting uh, straight across until I get to my next yarn over. And then work that one through the back. So now it's time to do another increase round. So we do our yarn over, but this stitch has already been worked through the back on the previous row. So we can just knit to the next location where we need to create our increase. So we're going to look for the telltale sign of here's a very straight line of knit stitches and we can see that the, these stitches come out from it. So you look for that last column of straight stitches 
and then you know it's time to create a yarn over. Again, I'm looking for that very straight column of stitches. That's my last one. And now it's time to do a yarn over. If you get interrupted while you were creating your toe and you can't remember, am I supposed to be doing an increase round or is it time to do a plain round? Look at the stitches on the needle. It's gonna be a little harder to tell that on this first stitch, but you can look at the stitches right here. And if you see that is not a crossed stitch there, that's a yarn over, it hasn't been worked yet. You know that this is a plain round. So you're going to continue like this, alternating an increased round with a plain round until you have the full number of stitches you need on your needle. You're going to end with a plain round so that you can close up all of your yarn overs. And that way, as you transition into the foot of the sock, if you need to do some sort of a stitch pattern, all of the stitches on the needle will be regular stitches. None of them will be yarn overs. So I'm about to work my final plain round and I want to show you what you can do if you discover when you are working a plain round that you had forgotten to do a yarn over in the previous round. So I'm working across here until I get to the point where that yarn over should be. There's that straight column there. What I can see under my needle is I have a twisted stitch and a plain stitch there and I don't have my yarn over here. I'd forgotten to do it. So I can create it at this point and then work it. Let me get rid of the working yarn so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take my left needle and I'm going to lift that strand. You can see it's lying on the needle so it's lying to the left. I'm going to take my working needle and then just work it through the back so that when I actually work it, it will create that left twisting stitch. So you can make up for it um, if you have forgotten to do one of them and you discover it as you are working a plain round. Okay, so I have all 64 of the stitches that I want. Uh, I have worked all of my plain rounds and so I don't have any yarn overs left on the needle and I can transition into the foot of my sock. If you enjoy exploring sock knitting techniques, I have a playlist of all my sock videos right over here. If you'd like to focus your explorations on sock toes only, I have a playlist of sock toes down here. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.